Today, we got something different planned for you. I hooked up with a, a good friend of mine. His name is Greg. You're going to meet him soon. Uh, and he's been building this plane for about 20 years. I will save that for Greg later on to walk us through his, uh, the process of building this plane. This is an RV6A. It has a Lycoming IO360. 180 horse. And this is the panel. Okay, Greg, why don't you come on over here and meet the viewers. This is Greg, the owner. Greg's going to walk us through his interior and uh, instrument panel, which is just, I think, magnificent. So, Greg, take us through this. Well, like Dave mentioned, David mentioned, I've been at this for 21 years. I've moved the airplane probably six or seven times in the meantime of building it. And it's been a nice project. Obviously, it's taken a long time. Um, this is the last one of the RV6 models, which means it has a larger tail on it. Um, it rudders pretty much has a, the RV7 slash 8 tail on it, a little bit bigger. Um, but at any rate, it's been a great project to build throughout the uh, 21 year span. Um, in the meantime, I was trying to design how, how to do this panel. I wanted to do it as economical, safe, and structured in a way that it's really easy to use um, starting through starting and shutdown. I, I structured it so that I just got one big PFD, which you can't really see from where David's at real easy, but the uh, pilot can real see real easy. I put a little iPad mount here. I had left this space in the panel here for the iPad mount and because with ForeFlight it's just so easy to plan your trip before you go and use ForeFlight or some other type of navigation aid and fly the airplane, use it for navigation, use it for weather, use it for traffic and so forth. So I like having that uh, when I fly. And you can transfer all the information from the ForeFlight, the iPad, to the Garmin 650 navigation unit via what I have a Flightstream 210 installed. That's this over here? Yep, that's a Garmin 650 right there. So I designed it to be an instrument panel so I could fly instruments with it. Uh, the Garmin 650 is a great source for that with all the GPS data, the ILS frequencies, the approach data, the, the nearest airport, the nearest frequencies. It's all modern touch technology and it's just phenomenal and makes situational awareness a, just a great tool for pilots. I made it so we could pretty much start the panel from from left to right, down and over to take off, and then when you after you land, you end up going from right to left to shut the airplane down. So I try to make that as basic as possible. And also I do have all the checklists that I installed on Core Flight. There's a checklist part of this that you can toggle to see what you've got done, what you have yet to do, so you don't forget anything. But it's so basic and simple that I could just look at what I got as a flow through first, which is what you want to do, and then refer to your checklist to make sure it's all done. I like that. So yeah. just a logical protocol. Yep. So a little few more parts of this. I got the angle of attack here I have to set up yet. Um, I have two PFDs, one is backup. Uh, I have a radio control panel on top, Garmin 650 right here, another radio right there, and then the transponder. Um, so yeah, it should be pretty easy, pretty uh, really nice to use. With a big PFD here, I can go ahead and select map. I have a map on it or the engine data to give you all the engine information you want right there from uh, Grand Rapids Technology. It's really a nice source of data, source of information. And along with the uh, attitude, airspeed, and altitude and so forth on here, you have the engine information on the bottom, which is nice. Um, 
I really like that because I can look at it all right there and fly the airplane from just looking at that one PFD. Um, some modification I made to the inside. I developed this or I made this from a mold and fiberglass and it goes over that right there which is a fuel selector. Fuel okay. tank selector and the uh, fuel pump the from fuel pump. Yep. is down there from Andor. Uh, what else? Autopilot. Yeah, it's got autopilot via through the um, the, Gar the Grand Rapids technology. It's got roll in, pitch, so you'll be able to control it through the Grand Rapids technology itself. I also made a modification to move the seats back with a uh, Antex Blatt. He has this thing they came out with that you can push the seat back another four inches. What that does, it gives you a whole lot more room right here between the you know your body and what you're looking at in the cockpit. So you're not right on top of your instruments. So it gives you a whole lot more room in this RV6. I sat in one without this modification. I can assure you it's a huge difference. How about this here, Greg? Yeah, plus David and I put this on here. This is from Super Tracks and extends the uh, canopy back another 12 inches almost. And oh my gosh, it's just a great tool. Not only can you put the uh, luggage in here a lot easier and so forth, but you can get in the cockpit just by pulling this here getting up here and getting, walking right in just makes it a whole lot easier. This is a pull-in handle. It's incredible. So yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. So Greg, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, history of this airplane? When you started, some of what you went through? Yeah, I started, and, I started in 2000. That's when I got the kit. And with the RV6 models, you had to pretty much design a uh, um, a stand and make the elevator, the empennage kit, all by yourself. It's not drilled like it is today, CNC machine. You had to put a, a stand together, um, guide it all out, and build it. It took a long process, but uh, it was a lot of fun, very interesting, very good. So you start out with that project. Um, I got a quick build kit, so the fuselage comes pretty much finished. You got the top area to do get on it. You got all the flight controls to put in. Um, the wings come pretty much complete, however, you got to put some skins on the bottom and top, and you got to put those flight controls in there, um, cook it off, and, and uh, rig all the flight controls, which are um, torque tube and, and uh, oil cranks for, for flight controls. Like I mentioned earlier, the uh, tail was a one of the last six models, so the tail is a larger tail on it, um, which is better for, uh, I think, for any type of uh, maneuverability. So it's got the taller vertical. Yeah, it does. Um, that became else? a standard for the seven, correct? Oh uh, yeah, it did. Uh, and uh, Vance was having some problems with his nose gear on some of these things, and it was mainly pilot error. And so I did a few other things for the nose gear. I ended up putting this uh, brace on here, which anti splat develops. It, it's going to bend it all. It's going to bend up high and not down low, hopefully to prevent the uh, nose from dropping. And I also put a free spinning nose wheel on it so that Vance has you to have a torque tension on the nose wheel so you can tell when you touch the nose down it'll, it'll jerk back because it's got tension on it. Well, I have a free spinning nose wheel on this one. That's another mod that I put on it. Um, I also put uh, piano hinges on the wingtip so I can take these wingtips on and off within a minute. Otherwise, you got a screw every three inches or so, and that's difficult to put in when you got fiberglass on the outside. All I have to do is take a, a uh, plastic plate off here, which pulls the pins in, and I pull the uh, plate off, pull the pins out, and the wing tips off. Excellent. That's really quick. Quick release. Yeah, it is. So I did that to it. Um, you know, you do want one huge project at a time. You do a lot of research on it, you try to figure out what's right, you practice on it, and then you, you tackle it. And if it doesn't work out right, fiberglass is easy to fix. If you're using metal, you, it doesn't work out right, you end up uh, buying a new part and putting it back in. Luckily, I didn't have to do that very often, but that always is an option. But uh, the only good thing about taking 21 years is I had a lot of people I talked to, a lot of research I did, they just made the airplane the way I want it, and I'm really pretty happy with it. What's so exciting about it now is after 21 years, we're finally going to start the engine tomorrow. And hopefully <laughs> fly it soon. So I'm still waiting on the aircraft registration back from the FAA, but that should happen here hopefully within a week or two. And then uh, 
start flying the airplane. What's behind the 21 years? Was there a period where you didn't do any work at all? Or? Yeah, it is. I, I was building a house, construction, and renovating a house for six, seven years, so I didn't work on it then. I stopped building for a while because of the nose gear. Um, the, the collapsing nose gear yeah, and planes flip over. Flip over. So yeah. I, I finally realized after talking to enough people, it was mainly a pilot error landing on a short airstrip, holding the brakes, or getting on the brakes and uh, putting a lot of pressure on that nose wheel, nose wheel grabbing a divot on sod or something like that, pulling it back and he flipped those over. So yeah. I stopped building for a while just till I was satisfied um, about what, what they had done with that and how they fixed the problem. I've seen videos of that. It's pretty scary. Yeah, it's not good. No. And, uh, so that, that held me back for a while. But now I'm all excited about it and um, tomorrow starting the engine is going to be a big deal. It was a big deal putting the oil in the engine and checking the uh, fuel pump out to make sure I had good flow through the fuel pump. Uh, David and I did that about two weeks ago. We ended up checking the fuel pump out. We disconnected the line up front by the uh, fuel injection unit and we flew, we uh, put through five gallons at a time, yep. determined how much time it would take and calibrate the uh, instruments on the Grand Rapids. And that was a, a lot of fun and a learning experience itself. But uh, I think we to, got have, like to have one, more than one person help you out, let me tell you, two heads are better than one, three heads are better than two, and four heads are better than all. Now, of course, you can get in way of each other, but if somebody's in control and trying to direct the whole thing, it makes the whole thing a beautiful thing. And yeah. A it's great a community to work together to try to get something done. What else can I tell you? Um, I told you about this mod. Uh, I told you about the panel, how I developed that or designed that. I'm really excited about that. It's not one of those, you know, elaborate big dual G3 X's, which would be nice. Um, but when I bought that Grand Rapids technology, and when you think about building an airplane, you pretty much want to wait till you're ready for that stuff to buy it because something new is always coming out. Um, so I was happy with getting the Grand Rapids. After hooking it up, uh, I, I, I'm really excited about it. It should be really nice to use that. Also, I put a vertical power, which is the Aerotronics thing in there, which is a uh, solid state circuit breaker control panel. And I was really apprehensive about that, getting the electric started. Man, when I started it, it was so easy to hook up, to plan your electrics out, how much load goes where and so forth, what do you want for an emergency backup bus, what you want for a backup battery. Um, by the way, I do have a backup battery. It's a IVBS backup battery. So if my electrics were to fail or if I had to shut things down for smoke, I still got the backup battery supplying power to the uh, one of the um, PFDs, Garmin 650 so I can communicate. And uh, if I have to, I can shut that off and still run the airplane. I got dual P mag. We'll talk about the engine here in a little bit. But the, the uh, engine will still run all by itself as long as I got you know, power going to the uh, P mag alternators. But um, just like every other, other airplane design, they want backup systems. And I think this is going to have the backup systems I need uh, for any type of situation. And I feel good about it, feel safe about it, and I can't wait to start flying it. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about the motor and the history behind this thing. So it's pretty cool. Greg, tell us about this. Well, like the avionics, you don't want to buy those till you're pretty much ready. but. When I first started this project, I, I got talked into buying a engine that was, um, uh, I bought it from Wentworth and they had a prop strike. So I tore the whole thing apart um, and I didn't do anything on it for a while until I got a lot of the other project done. Um, what I did do is after I tore it down, I bought a brand new ECI case, brand new Millennium Cylinder Pistons and Rings. I had the crank and the cam, yellow tech from um, aircraft specialties, all the gears and accessories, yellow tech from aircraft specialties. I had the uh, prop governor, this is an IL 360. Um, I had the prop governor serviced, and that's all zero or overhauled. I had the fuel pump overhauled, so everything pretty much is new on this engine. I got a, I hooked up a uh, airflow performance. Um, fuel injection unit which has a purge valve on it so if you have a hot start you can purge the fuel through here get cold fuels and, and, and start the engine with a fuel injection it should help that out pretty good whirlwind prop it's an RV 200 prop I bought that a long time ago uh, they had a special on through Vans aircraft Vans Air Force and um, I bought it 
bought that then, so that should be a real nice, nice prop. This prop was designed specifically for the RV? Yes, yes it was. Nice. It's a composite prop, it's lightweight, it's really nice. It should be, it looks beautiful, hopefully it performs that way. But when I've heard people that have used them, they like them a lot, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I put a uh, oil filter adapter so it angles up. It should be easier to change the oil, I hope. We'll see how that goes. Um, how about the ignition? The ignition, I used a dual PMAG. So I got these a while ago, and I've had them updated from um, Brad there, EMAG here. And I really like it. The people that have used them like it a lot. Um, they, uh, they supply... Uh, the ignition for the airplane and and they also have a backup alternator on so that if you shut the power off and as long as you have I believe around 8, 900, 8 or 900 RPM you'll test that out during pre-flight or maintenance check once in a while you can you the uh, backup power in an alternator will supply power for your ignition so you don't need anything else on to fly the airplane you don't have to talk to anybody imagine, imagine that not have to talk to anybody just wait to, you know, rock your wings uh, on final and land, and land the airplane That'd be okay. So very nice. Um, the only problem with this design, I don't like that. I don't like is it's really crowded in here. So David helped me a lot with this. With the uh, this is just some something for the uh, Earth Power unit for uh, programming that. But um, there's not a lot of room to work back here. You'll find that out in building smaller planes. But uh, one way or another, it takes time, and you work it out just fine. I see you have an Odyssey. PC 680 battery down there. Yeah, that should be fine for start. Yeah, should work just fine. It's a deep cycle, lots of power. David helped me put on a maintenance charger or for a battery tender, and uh, that's real easy to get through through the oil filter door. So that should be nice. Um, Did you uh, rebuild the motor yourself, or were you in tandem with the uh, client aviation? Well, I have friends who know uh, Paul Klein, they're over at Klein Aviation, and he rebuilds like homies and Continentals, and luckily enough, they got me in there, and he helped me rebuild the whole engine there while I was there. So I helped him um, clean it all up, prep it all up, uh, put all the new stuff on there that I got, and we rebuilt it, had it done about, uh, about 10 to 14 days. Nice. It was nice. So it's nice to see how everything up gets put back together, and you know yourself that it's... Can you talk about this exhaust? It looks like a crossover. That's a Vetterman exhaust, and that's a welded exhaust that Vetterman puts together. And a lot of the RV builders buy that, and it works just fine. Should be just fine. Okay. Very nice. I like weight so, starter. The exciting thing is, we've been through the oil pressure check, got the fuel flow going, and tomorrow's going to be the big day of starting this thing.